You know the drill, quick and easy flies, that works. <laughs> my feet, see my feet. All right, y'all, so I am going to tie my go-to redfish fly. I use this thing all over the place, particularly in Florida. I've had a lot of success in the low country as well as in the Louisiana marsh with this particular fly. Redfish love it. It's kind of like a natural looking little fly, easy to tie. Where are my scissors? I don't know. Let me <laughs> look for them. All right, so I uh, everybody has good scissors and bad scissors. These are my good scissors. I drew a little black dot on there so I know that these are my trimming scissors, the ones that I use for material and thread. I have other scissors that I use to cut things like wire. You wanna go ahead and start off with your base wrap. I'm using black 210 denier thread for this. I know for the past few years, I started using black for almost all my flies. It just kinda started off as, I was kinda lazy to switch it up, but I actually kinda like the way it looks. I think it gives the fly a little stealthy approach. It blends in with the hook because I'm using the Gamakatsu B10S Stinger, which comes in like that black color. So I like the black thread. It kind of just blends in nicely. All right, so now that I got my base wrap on there, I'm going to go with this. This is Tiger Bard Rabbit Strip. This is the black and orange over tan. If you like this video and others like it, make sure you subscribe. I got a bunch of fly time videos on my channel, as well as videos out there fishing and other miscellaneous tips and tricks to help you catch more fish on fly. So I'm sure you'll see in some of my previous videos where I catch a lot of redfish on this fly. This worked very well for me. When cutting rabbit strip, the hide is much shorter than the actual material extends. I'm gonna go with about an inch and a half of hide, which will give me about two inches of a tail. Again, I'm gonna cut it at the hide. As you can see, even though the hide is only about an inch and a half long, the material extends way past the hide. So, and again, this is where it gets tricky when you're using this kind of material. If you're gonna put a weight on the fly, it's gonna ride hook shank up. So you're gonna want it to expose the fibers to the fish when the fly is being fished on the bottom. In this case, this is the bottom, so I'm actually gonna tie it upside down because when it's in the water, the fly's gonna be riding upside down and the material's gonna be on the other side, so. You're going to want to place this right over the, the base wrap. Get like four loose wraps and then cinch it down tight. That's gonna allow it to, that's gonna allow you to hold it in place and cinch it tight right where you want it to be. If you try to just go tight turns immediately, what ends up happening is the thread just pulls the material and it'll want to spin around the shank of the hook rather than cinch down exactly where you placed it. All right, so now that I got this on, I'm gonna work my way forward. Let me cut some of this off. I'm gonna trim a little bit off because I don't want this fly to be too long. Work my way forward. This is one of those quick flies that just simply gets the job done. All right, so now that I got the tail material on, I'm gonna go ahead and tie on my bead chain eyes. For this particular fly, I'm using gold bead chain. I'm not exactly sure where I got this pack, but it was actually very cheap. Apparently only $2.80. So to cut the bead chain, I'm using a set of pliers, good old rusty pliers that I got somewhere. And again, I like bead chain eyes because it acts as a rattle. It really gets the fish's attention. All right, so I'm gonna work this forward a bit. You wanna build up a little bit of a mound where you want the bead chain eyes to sit. If not, it'll just kinda wanna move around as you tie it on. So figure eight these on. Now that I got the bead chain eyes on, I'm gonna go ahead and 
put on a weed guard. I'm using Hard Mason, 16 pound. This stuff works great for a weed guard. This is also what a lot of guys in the Keys use as their shock tippet while they're tarpon fishing. All right, so now I got the weed guard cut. I'm going to bend it over itself. Kind of create this little bit of a loop here. You want to go over the hook shank. And I go ahead and tie four loose wraps in front. I go from behind to the front of the weed guard. Once I have four on there, I pull it down and it kind of tightens it in there. And then I go back over it with a few more wraps. That gets my weed guard in place. So now, work the thread back to where I want my body material to start. And for body material, I'm gonna go ahead and use this speckled brown minnow head. This is like brown and gold flashy fibers together creating a minnow head. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and tie this on at the very back of where you want the fly to transition from body to tail. So you need to get some wraps and work your way up to the back of the eyes. All right, so now I got my body material. I'm gonna go ahead and start working it forward. And every time I turn, I'm gonna pull the fibers back a bit to make them stand up rather than to, rather than just kind of get tangled up on themselves. So again, just keep rolling it forward. As you roll it forward, pull those fibers back. The amount of turns will be determined by the pack of middle head you're using. Uh, they're, they're not very consistent these days. Whenever I buy a pack, sometimes they're thicker, sometimes they're, there's less material on there. So if there's less material, it requires more turns. If there's more material, then there's less turns. But I guess inflation is a thing, so these days they're tying it with less material on there, causing you to have to do more turns and end up wasting more material. All right, so you wanna get a couple wraps to cinch that down. All right, now I'm gonna work my thread in front of the weed guard. And now it's time for a whip finish. Four. Let's go ahead and cut that. So the fly's almost done. I got all the tying on there. Now I just got to brush out this material and trim it down the way that I want. All right, so again, because this is gonna wanna ride hook shank up, what you do is trim off the top, which was is eventually gonna be the bottom, but I like to trim this part flat. What ends up happening is the material is gonna wanna float, so it'll turn onto the side that has more. So I trim it off the bottom. Make it nice and flat. Again, this is the top right now, but when it's fished, it'll be the bottom. It'll move like this in the water. And I kind of want to trim this a little bit. Not too much. I kind of just want to tape it. Make it a little bit conical. For those of you that uh, left a comment last time I said conular. Which conular is a word, but. All right, so now I'm going to want to trim this down quite a bit. So again, I'm just trying to pull the materials how I want it to flow, and then I'm gonna trim it accordingly. It's time to cut the weed guard. So for the weed guard, I like to go just past the tip of the hook, just past the tip of the hook, and then cut it. So my idea with this is if it gets hung up on some weeds, Pushes it past the hook tip and just keeps going. There you have it guys. This is a very simple but very effective 
fly that works for redfish pretty much anywhere in the state of florida i've had success on this fly even in louisiana or over in the low country while fishing for redfish in the flooded grass so very good all-around fly works in shallow water works in deep water just really gets their attention it's got a lot of gold flash in it and it just really works